from the time he was m m like four years old, he, he would go over to the neighbors and upturn their stones to uh, look for whatever bugs he could find. He, he liked to find different bugs. And I thought, you know, this is a little wacky for a, a, for a child, but um, he was, uh, all his life he was very inquisitive and curious. He always liked something new. There was uh, a resident in hematology who was associated with the laboratories as well, and he was working with Jack Hirsch. And uh, that was John Kelton. So he, uh, he and I struck up an immediate uh, friendship, partly because he, he was about as rude and crude as I am. So I first met John when he presented at my office um, and wanted to work with me as a research fellow. And uh, he was a fun-loving sort of guy. Well, I've worked at McMaster since the late Jurassic period, and I've worked with John for more than 20 years. And I think I've been chosen to participate because I'm the one who will speak the truth and tell you that, frankly, he's madder than a box of frogs. Uh, he's also, of course, a truly gifted leader. He really is. Um, and he has a leadership style. He's a commitment, first of all, to uh, McMaster University and to the Faculty of Health Sciences that is very, very deeply rooted. Um, and everything he does is, uh, uh, is for the betterment of, of the faculty and therefore for us, uh, very directly. John has had a vision for the school. I mean, he's been there long enough to carry it out. The school, you know, the, the health sciences program is John Kelton now. I mean, that's just his influence. And it's a magnificent program. Dr. Kelton is a visionary leader. And he does things that uh, nobody has thought of. I think his success with, his spectacular success with, with uh, philanthropists, really is because of a unique combination of qualities that he's got. He's got incredible personal charm. He conveys a strong sense of responsibility, so I would imagine donors feel that their money is in safe hands with him. And he is well known to be one of the hardest working persons around. And, and I actually would say John hasn't focused on philanthropy. John has focused on investment. So he really got that these remarkable donors were making a gift, I suppose, but we're making an investment in Hamilton, in Ontario, in Canada, in McMaster, but I think he changed the channel on that dialogue. Well, I think what's most remarkable is that uh, he's managed to do so much and continue on with so many different hats and, and actually do them so well. You know, for me, uh, most remarkably, out of all of those things, John never stopped practicing medicine. Uh, never stopped going in uh, to his clinic to see patients. And I think that really grounded John uh, in a very important way uh, and that in everything that he did, uh, he remembered that at the end of the day, this was all about people. Uh, and he has a deep uh, passion, commitment, concern uh, for people's well-being. And uh, that, I think more than anything, uh, is what makes John a really special person. John has an excellent leadership style, and, and one of the things he and I both share is, uh, is a uh, admiration for Sir Winston Churchill. And uh, Churchill, uh, in, in speaking of leadership, said, uh, uh, courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. And I think John is good at both of those. He, he's good at making his point, he's good at leading the faculty, by being the spokesperson, but he's also very good at sitting back and listening and, and, uh, and uh, taking others' opinions. Doesn't always, doesn't always accept them, but he sits and listens to them, and I think that's the mark of a great leader. I always feel when I'm talking with him, I have his undivided attention, and I'm sure he does that with everybody. Absolutely. Uh, he listens that. to yes, you. He does. He really listens. And, and, and takes what you say very seriously, oh, very thoughtfully. Um, may not agree with everything you no. say, probably doesn't often, but... Uh... What's he like to work with as a leader? Um, 
it's tough. He's hard to work with as a leader. I think he's raised the performance of people in senior management uh, during his, uh, his time as dean. And that's really a reflection of his, his driving nature. He doesn't let anything go. I think what's it like to work with him? To answer that, I could use just one word, and that would be annoying for the most part, um, because he challenges you. I've seen John as, uh, as his mentor, as a colleague, and now I work for him. So now he's my boss. Um, I liked him better as a, a student, as a colleague, than uh, having him as my boss, because he's a tough boss. John's leadership style is really characterized by um, extraordinarily high expectations, uh, both of himself uh, and of the people who surround him. I, I remember maybe six months after I started here at Hamilton Health Sciences, uh, I was in a meeting with John, and John said, you know, um, your time at Mohawk, you really changed that place. And he just looked at me and there was kind of an awkward silence. And I realized that John was really asking me why I hadn't done that here at Hamilton Health Sciences already. He has an amazing ability to drill down and get right at to uh, the meat of whatever project we're presenting. Uh, amazing, but I'll say sometimes very annoying way of just pointing it out. And he's, he's almost always right. Almost. Always. Almost. Almost? Okay. Almost. Almost. <laughs> Is John human? Are you asking? Is John human? Uh, John's very human. Um, I used to take our laboratories on, um, on fishing trips. John came one year, um, had a shirt and tie on, go ice fishing. So, uh, which is interesting. In return for showing promise and and excellence and even a desire to excel, he gives you every opportunity to do it. And I, I personally feel indebted to him for so, so many of those opportunities that he's given me over the years. Um, this is one opportunity for me to be able to say thank you back and uh, um, really uh, show my appreciation for all those opportunities he's given me. It's, it's been one of the one of the most exciting and rewarding 15 years working with him, learning from him, seeing how he's advanced the university I am personally so invested in. There are great things to come, but we stand on the shoulders of giants. And I don't want that to go to his head either, but it, it has been just a blast and a, a true adventure all the way through. Uh, there aren't a lot of people uh, that I strongly admire, but I admire him a lot. I admire him because he's, he's achieved a lot. Um, he works very hard. I think most people admire intelligence and drive, and he's got both. I think that pretty well says it all. His reward, I believe, is having people around him that are successful, not necessarily him, that's his joy in life, is helping people to do their best. I've been very lucky, very fortunate in many aspects of my career. But one of the luckiest things for me, one of the most fortunate things, is to have had John as leader of our faculty. Well, one thing for sure is I will remember how many iPhones he can actually go through within a period of 12 months, right? And Jim, you can attest to that firsthand <coughs> because I think you've repaired each one of them. Computers, even laptops. I look at it that he likes to be progressive and at the cutting edge of technology rather than breaking <laughs> things. <laughs> You're very kind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to decide which three words to Japanese use. Japanese three words, is that what it is? Three words, that's all you get to say. Uh, the three words I'd use to describe Dr. Kelton are uh, intelligent, 
meticulous. And for my third word, I'll probably go outside the box and say apples. He always has an apple on him. I think he probably keeps a bushel or something stuffed under his desk. Insightful, mentor, coy wolf. Caring, inspiring, and a challenger. Help me to understand. Patient. Avid gardener. Dynamic. Energetic. Just one of the girls. <laughs> a very funny guy. Supportive, creative, and motivating. Supportive, disruptive, directive. Can, can I address him? Excellence, devotion, innovation. Strong, inspirational, sometimes mysterious leadership. Intuitive, witty, and most importantly, supportive. Forward thinking, trustworthy, remarkable. Eye of the tiger. For the last 10 years, John's kept me out of trouble, I think. He's always had my back. <laughs>